He wrote with a great deal of uh, dramatic force so that people enjoyed reading his history books and he would animate the stories he was or the histories he was uh, uh, telling. So there is a certain quality to his history writing which rises above the politics of history writing uh, for the, of the past uh, 70, 80 uh, years. Now, what was central to Jadunath Sarkar? And this is, I think, the most important thing to remember because there are all kinds of views about Jadunath Sarkar. There are all kinds of views about the Mughals. Uh, uh, what was central to Jadunath Sarkar was his view that the writing of history is an intensely personal experience between the historian and the evidence which he has gathered. That there should be nothing coming in between these two basic forces, the historian and the evidence. So he said, it doesn't matter whether my history somebody likes or dislikes, whether it is good for the country or not, whether it shows my country in a good light or a poor light, all of that is immaterial. My job as a historian is to interpret the facts which I have and present them as faithfully as I uh, can. So essentially what he accepted was the fact that in history writing, you will never have one view. You will have the view of one historian. You will not have a view of everyone agreeing on what, uh, what, uh, what happened in the, in the past. There will be as many views as there are people writing those uh, histories. So I think that is something which we ought to remember when we talk about Jadunath Sarkar. And the second thing, of course, is that he felt that... Uh, because it is such a personal experience and because it is essentially a process by which a historian interprets the data which he has, there is no scope in it for social or national or uh, factors to come in or for nationalism or chauvinism to play a role. So in that sense, he stands out uh, as an objective historian. Now, uh, Swapan is quite right. There was a period from the 1950s till the 19. 80s or 90s, when this kind of view was uh, somewhat in, uh, was regarded with a fair amount of suspicion, because it was felt that history must have a larger purpose, that history should try to consolidate communities, it should try to unite uh, different communities, and we shouldn't go into those aspects of our history which would be divisive in the present uh, context. Now, Jadunath Sarkar would have disagreed uh, immensely with that view. He said. Good or bad, I have to tell the history as it is. So which is why he wrote about Aurangzeb at a time when the communal situation in the country was quite supercharged, you know, in the second decade of the 19th, of the 20, uh, 20th century, the Khilafat movement was at a, uh, had, uh, Khilafat sentiment had uh, become quite uh, prominent. But he wrote about Aurangzeb and when, when you read Sarkar's account of Aurangzeb, you, you understand the Sarkar deeply admired Aurangzeb. There were many qualities of Aurangzeb which Sarkar deeply admired. Uh, but at the same time, he said that I cannot be blind to other facets of Aurangzeb's uh, rule. And similarly, when he wrote about the decline of the Mughals, Sarkar by no means is celebrating the decline of the Mughals. He sees it as a great tragedy which has befallen the country. Because what he sees in the decline of the Mughals is a national decline. Because along with the decline of the Mughals, he sees a simultaneous decline of the Marathas, a decline of the Sikhs, and in fact a decline of all national forces against uh, imperialism coming in from, uh, from outside. So, you know, it would be mistaken to see Sarkar in a parochial sense. We have to see Sarkar as someone who felt that objective history writing as the historian defines it is the is really the role of the historian that is the the duty of the historian and of course views about history you know history is written to be superseded uh, every generation will rewrite history there is never going to be a standard narrative which is going to be accepted for all uh, for all times so i would say yes sarkar is important that despite the view his views have been superseded, a new kind of history, new kind of histories have been written. But because he was a, such a great writer, such a great, uh, someone who wrote with such dramatic force, his books remain in print. And it's something which uh, we should all try to aspire to. Sarkar, and along with Sarkar, G.S. Sardesai and Raghubir Singh, 
they had an almost obsessive desire to accumulate new facts. That means you try to find manuscripts, you try to find new sources, and you try to use, unearth new facts so that it enriches the history which you are writing. They were almost obsessive about the, uh, the, the uh, given the passion they put into collecting these uh, documents. And, and many of his, many of his, uh, you know, he was, a, he was not an easy man to get along with. And, and he made many enemies uh, down, uh, down the way. And while one can say that there was a certain political change which explained why he uh, was somehow regarded as being a somewhat disreputable historian, it also had a great deal to do with his personal animosities. I mean, he, he fought with everyone. Uh, one of his one of his great fights, and this was talked about a great deal in the 1920s and 1930s, was uh, 1920s was with the then Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University, Ashutosh Mukherjee, and thereafter he continued that fight with Ashutosh Mukherjee's son, Shah Prashad uh, uh, Mukherjee, and uh, uh, and similarly he picked up quarrels uh, uh, all uh, everywhere, and much of it had to do with wa was with the fact that he had very, very strong views. He had very strong views on the writing of history. He had very strong views on the teaching uh, of history. So let me answer your second question first, that why did he write with such clarity? Uh, because he worked hard at being someone who could write clearly so that the ordinary person on the street would understand what he's uh, saying. And one of the, and he was a very accomplished teacher and a greatly revered teacher, one of the tasks he set himself as a teacher was how do I teach my students to write a sentence which is absolutely legible? And, and he wrote somewhere that if at the end of a third year BA, I can teach my students to write one paragraph which is clear, concise, uh, and makes sense, I think I have, uh, I've achieved what I set out to do. So I think writing with clarity meant uh, a lot of work. You had to polish your prose. You had to, you had to train yourself to think with clarity, because unless you think clearly, you won't write uh, uh, clearly. And certainly, I think you know that art of uh, that art of writing with clarity is uh, something which has been discounted, because if you have tests based on objective type, uh, and nobody's being taught to write a sentence or a paragraph, how will they ever learn how to write with clarity? So it's a discounted art, but it remains. Nevertheless, a highly prized commodity.